world expert. You've all played this thing, it's called Wordle, and if you're like me, you were wondering, I really like this game, but I wish I could do it at compile time, right? No, okay. <laughs> so I wrote this program, it doesn't even compile, but I can play Wordle with it, so I just compile. It gives me an error, and it tells me, welcome to Word Expert. To play, please pass a seed, as a preprocessor define, and it will tell you blah, 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 all that stuff. So I recompile, passing any seed, and it tells me, please enter the first guess with the guess as a preprocessor define. So I pass in a guess, crane, for example, and it tells me, hey, you pass crane, the outcome is x dash x x dash, so it's basically matching the letters to the final word, and it gives me this state, which is this sort of string that represents the state of the game, so I can keep playing by recompiling the same file over and over, passing the new state, and it's gonna be crane again, and it tell me no, you have to answer a new, a new guess, not the same one. So I can keep going, keep going, keep going, and I'm gonna eventually, you know, collapse onto something, and in this case, I finished my guesses, the word was flyer, and I failed. And I think, honestly, this is a great user interface, much better than the one on the website. You, know, <laughs> you don't need to open a browser, you can do it anywhere. It consumes less power, it's perfect. So, how does it work? First of all, you can try it out on Godbolt. You can just go on the link. There's a, you can find the slides on GitHub, there's a link later. But the way it works is basically this. I need three things. Uh, a way of producing arbitrary human-readable output as an error. Uh, random number generation at compile time and retaining state and keeping track of it for future compilations. So the first thing is quite interesting. Static assert might be your first choice, but it, but it doesn't work because static assert requires a string literal. And the string literal has to be embedded in the binary, so it cannot change depending on the, sti on the state or whatever. So we can sort of get close by having a struct called print, takes a bunch of characters as template parameters, and we do not provide a definition. If we attempt to create an object of that type, compiler will tell you, hey, you're trying to initialize something which is incomplete, which also happens as a side effect to print out the name of the type you're trying to, to initialize. So we're getting close to the printing. In C++20, we have uh, generalized and an, an NTTPs. So basically, you can provide any literal type as a non-type template parameter, including a fixed size string. So what you can do is you can have this CT string, stands for compile time string, it contains an array of characters and keeps track of the size. You can initialize it from a string literal, but then with constexpr you can actually mutate the characters inside the array. And if I change print to take that instead of an array of characters, and I provide a string like that into the print uh, object creation, then this will actually print out, you know, the string I provided. And as you can see, I can have a constexpr function that changes, mutates the state of the string however I want. So in this case, I am changing two characters in the array. And if I call print of test, the compiler, I think just Clang, no GCC, will actually expand the type to the string and provide the string on the output. GCC just gives me all the hexadecimal, which is not great. So Worldle only works on Clang, no GCC. This is a call for help from GCC developers, you know, fix your compiler. <laughs> um, compile time RNG, provide a seed module operator that's cryptographically secure, and that's done. <laughs> Retaining state and making progress, that's actually quite easy. You can have your state as a struct, you know, plain old data struct basically. Maybe the number of guesses you had, the guesses you made, and then as soon as you have a, a function to encode the state from a state to a string, and a function to do the opposite, you're pretty much done. So you can call that at the beginning of your, not program, there's no program, at the beginning of your compilation, and then you can encode and decode over and over again. And that's pretty much it. You can read more detailed information about how this works on my blog. The link is there, and if you wanna try it out, you can find the link that's clickable on the ACCU 2022 repo on GitHub. Thank you. <laughs>